we have South Carolina State. So let's kind of think a little bit about, you know, what kind of challenge that poses for us. Remember, they are they are the team that, you know, went to the playoffs a year ago. Uh, they gave us a great game a year ago, our opening day last year at their place. That game could have gone either way. Uh, special teams ultimately wound up making the difference, and we had a great fourth quarter. That was the difference in that game. Uh, they wound up having a good season. You know, they're 7-1 in the league. They were 9-4 overall. They won a handful of the last few games of the season last year. Uh, they run out of a multiple pro I set. They do a lot of motion. They'll do a lot of shifting. On any snap, they can hit multiple points of attack. So what we've got to be careful with on defense, if we don't make our reads, what's going to happen is, based on an initial flow, we'll have too many guys overplaying one part of their game. If we have too many guys overplaying one part of the game, we're going to give them an opportunity someplace else. So if the ball's on the right side of, let's say, their center, right side, as we look at it, right side of our right side of their center, the guys on the left side, there's going to be a threat coming back to them. They've got to be prepared to play that. The secondary, if they don't have a primary run responsibility, they've got to make sure they're, they're making their reads. So if they get a real run read, they have the freedom to come up. But if they got a pass read, it could be a play action pass. It could be a double pass. It could be a screen. It could be a draw. It could be a number of things. We've got to stay as disciplined as we ever have, and our technique and our fundamentals have to be good on defense. Um, um, they weren't bad the other day, but we got to get them better for us, for us to be a really good defensive team. And then once again, we got to be consistent and we can't give up a big play in the, in the, in the uh, special teams. And, you know, if we can make a big play or two, certainly that's going to make a difference as well in the game. So we know we have our, our work cut out for us. Uh, we're delighted to be able to play at home finally. Um, that doesn't, not going to change the way we play, but we're delighted to be able to play in front of our student body and our faculty and our fans. Uh, we're looking forward to doing that. And we expect a real solid, tough football game. They were preseason All-American uh, picks. They had 10 guys on their team overall that were pre-conference selections at one team or another. So, so they feel pretty good. They were picked to be second in the league against Bethune-Cookman, who's been a perennial power. Uh, so... Uh, so I think, you know, they, they certainly feel and they do have a, a solid, good football team. You mentioned number two, that's Mikhail Moody from Conway. Um, what about him in particular? I'm sure you looked at him at least in the recruiting process a couple of years ago before he ended up going where he went. He um, looks like he's second on the receiving uh, for SC State. And we all know what he can do for Conway and, and the young quarterback. Uh, uh, any concerns? I know there's other guys maybe higher up in the depth chart, but uh, it seems we all know what he can do here locally. But what kind of concerns do you have? Well, number two is one of the guys that I just mentioned, Mike. So, you know, we certainly pay him the respect that I think he deserves. You know, I think the fact that he's coming home to play, that's just going to give him more of an incentive to kind of be enthusiastic. It probably brings a little bit more uh, South Carolina State fans to the game, which is fine. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we certainly respect him. and we're, 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 We are aware of what he can do. Anything else, guys? I looked at the. Yeah, you, you see, again, you know my feelings on those. I think those games are all bad games. And I think the Division II games are bad games. I mean, you always ask questions. I mean, I get asked questions often about, you know, what my philosophy is as far as why we don't want to play FBS schools. But I feel the same way about Division II schools. What I want is an FCS schedule that's a real solid competitive schedule. I like the idea some of the games are closer, so we get develop more rivalries over time, get more people to the games. Uh, don't have to make too many plane trips or multi, multi, multi-hour bus trips. Uh, but, but you get a feel certainly for what their base stuff is and what they can do. Um, so you had a chance to watch them slaughter somebody the week before and get slaughtered the following week, but you still get a chance to kind of watch what they're doing. I mean, we know Clemson. Clemson's not just – Clemson's a pretty good. They're a very good FBS school. And once that kind of starts to snowball away from you, that can get out of hand. That certainly would happen. It happened the same way, same, same way in reverse against Benedict uh, the, the, the previous week. But we get a feel for – we can certainly get a feel for what they do. Um, Again, I don't think either one of those games are great games for them, but that, that's not mine. That's, I've, I've got nothing to say about that. Um, but then, remember, we looked at their game with us last year, and then we looked at their last three games of the season last year. So we really looked at six games in preparation for this week.